All right, YouTube, let's talk about drop leg holsters. I've been seeing a lot of comments on the forums about they're just horrible holsters and there's no point in buying one and someone can strip it from you. So here's, as I prefer to hip carry myself and conceal carry. If you have a conceal carry or CPL, I recommend always using it. But here's my kind of unbiased review on leg holsters. What are they? Would they be practical? Should I buy one and why? And so on my leg here, since I, this is a 1911 form, I do have a leg carry Blackhawk 1911 holster. Regardless of the color of my 1911, by the way, it is a showpiece. It's not being fired. It's completely functional. It's all Duracoated. But then on the 1911, things worth noting on this build are that there is a trigger guard here. It works very well. No one can take it from you unless they know how to function it but it's very easy accessible. Also worth noting on how the trigger guard works is the gun does have to slide back to click in, which took me forever to figure out, but the finger position lines up perfectly with your finger position as you're pulling out. Since you're at this point, everyone should know your finger should not be on the trigger post ready to shoot. Also worth noting, there's the argument, age old argument of open, should I open carry or should I conceal carry? And why this is a confusing argument, and there's not actual data on this, is because concealed carry people will generally say, if there's a gunman in the room, or if there's someone robbing a place, I don't want him to know that I have a gun. He'll shoot me first, which makes obvious sense. And the open carry argument is that if there is someone committing a crime, he's less likely to commit that crime if he sees that I have a gun. And the problem with this uh, arguing back and forth with this, and I have open carried, I live in Washington State, so it's legal here, and I have a concealed carry as well. I, I'm more comfortable concealed carrying, but at the same time, it's an impossible statistic to argue because concealed carry says, I will prevent crime once it's happened. Open carry says, I will try, I hope to prevent crime from happening. And so you will have a, st a statistic on that because you're trying to track crimes that are never occurring or that will not occur, which is impossible for obvious reasons. And so that's why open carry versus concealed carry is mostly a preference that we don't have an actual statistic on, nor will we likely ever because of reasons stated about 10 seconds ago. And so regardless of your preference on open carry or concealed carry, let's go back to the holster here. Throw out the argument that open carry oh, is horrible, it's so much worse than concealed carry, you're gonna get yourself shot. Assume that they're both equal. Go back to specifically this holster. This holster, I actually do not mind. The problem with it, I found for 1911 leg holsters, is that 1911 is not a light gun. If you're thinking of, oh, what's the lightest or most compact gun I can carry, a full size 1911 does not come to mind. And so if you don't have a decent belt, even on this, you can see it here, it slightly pulls down. That's just because of the weight. And it's going to do that over time, which is noticeable. The second argument we're going to see here is from car people. If you're sitting down in a car, it's very hard to draw. And I guess I can kind of address that. Yes, I actually do agree. And for even that, you have to take the gun and you have to rotate it slightly upwards because it'll dig into your seat but it is not impossible by any means to draw. It's not comfortable, but then again, it's also not comfortable to draw from your waist in a car either, especially if you're wearing some kind of coat or concealed carrying. So if you are concealed carrying this under a jacket, you will probably be able to draw from your waist faster than if it's under something. And the reason I bring up of why it's under something is because I ride a motorcycle year round. And so I, on a leg holster, if I'm riding, I'm more in a squatted position like this. And so it actually is conven convenient for me to pull like this. However, under leather, if any of you ride motorcycles and have a full leather jacket, you can't get that jacket up and over the back of the gun no matter how hard you try it. If someone pulled a gun on you from a car, which apparently has happened before, you're, I, I realize there's no possible way I'm going to get my handgun out. Overall, the leg holster argument is not terrible. Another thing worth noting, and I'm not horribly great at speed loading anymore, or speed reloading, the position of this is actually very low. And on these, the plastic is relatively cheap inside. So I actually, you can't see it on here, but I had to put foam behind the retaining pad here to keep the mag from just kind of bouncing because I'd hate for this to fall out. 
Also, so I don't get any banter. These are dummy rounds. So no hate on you might shoot yourself. Why are you acting as if the gun isn't loaded? I've cleared the gun multiple times just to be sure. So while I would note too that this gun literally sits at the most comfortable draw position. If you're looking for a quick draw on your gun, it's not going to get more comfortable. Hip draw by itself is actually uncomfortable because you have to draw up much farther than your arm is comfortable pulling from. From down here, it's very comfortable. So you, so you definitely have a draw advantage. But however, because your magazine holder is on your leg right next to it, it's comfortable for your right arm to draw. It is not comfortable to have to reach down across your body and draw a second mag with. And but while that being said, it's also not impossible. So kind of my closing thoughts on draw play holsters are kind of do your own thing. You carry what you want to carry. You're carry if you're carrying a 1911, that's already not a super necessarily I would say very commonly used uh, full size carry gun. And but we're 1911 fanatics. So kind of do your own thing. Personally, if you take out the argument, which we have no statistics for, and never will have statistics for, that open carry is more dangerous than concealed carry, then I say go for it. I think they're great. I don't personally use one anymore myself. But once again, back to the motorcycle argument, if you're on, if you're in a vehicle, it actually is much more convenient to leg draw than to body draw, especially once you're sitting down, which I have tried. I've got it on my side right now on a Probably hard to see with this lighting, but your body is not comfortable drawing from your waist, especially in a confined vehicle, up vertical. Your body is meant to draw in this position from your horizontal position. I don't, what was that movie? Uh, the old Star Wars, A New Hope, where he draws under the table. That brings you with the leg holster, basically in a perfect position to draw at your target if you had to. If you're shooting out the side of the car, there are a lot of variables here, it's less convenient, but... Overall, I don't have an issue with drop leg holsters. They're not personally my thing, but if it is, if it's yours, I say go for it. They're great holsters. The holsters themselves could use a little work. A lot of them are very cheap. Uh, I lost the flashlight holder pretty quick. It got sucked off of my uh, the mounting for it. If they made one out of a thicker or more durable polymer, that would make it a lot better. But overall, they're not horrible holsters.